Hello everybody and welcome back to another deck tech. As you know, we do deck techs here on the channel every Saturday because I like to take the latest spicy brew I can find in the community and show it off to the world. So today we're gonna take a look at the brand new grinding station underworld breach combo that's gaining a lot of traction in modern lately and that I thought it'd be a good idea to do a deck tech on it now rather than later before it becomes a spike deck because it definitely will. But right now it's technically in its brewing phase and I can't dodge the fact that it's spicy. So I just had to show it to you guys. So today specifically, we're gonna take a look at a list of this that is by, I'm going to butcher this, Shapinator. And this list does not have Urza in it as you would expect. Now Urza technically is not needed in this archetype. Urza is basically a backup win con. You can run that if you want, but today's variant is basically just trying to get the, the combo. Nothing more, nothing less. Just getting the combo and going off with it. That's all it's focused on. So basically today I'm showing you guys the list that all of you top tier players watching are probably going to build and take to your next GP and just crush it with and become famous. Because this deck is pretty busted, I would say. So yeah, like I said, wanted to do it before it becomes a spiky thing because we like to avoid all things spiky and top tier in this channel because this channel is based around brewing and spiciness but it's spicy at the moment. So as always, as we jumped into the deck tech, don't forget to leave a comment down below letting me know what you think about today's deck. So let's get right to it. Hope you enjoy. You would need us some magic cards, but also want to support the channel? Consider purchasing from tcgplayer.com through our decklist link down below. And did you ever want to play magic online, but buying cards is just too expensive? Consider signing up with Mana Traders through our link down below. They're the go-to MTGO card rental service. And don't forget to use the coupon code MarinMoon when you sign up. So today we're looking at the Underworld Breach and Grinding Station combo, one that a lot of you guys might not have heard of yet, but will know all well very soon. Um, so Underworld Breach is definitely something that you've heard about. It is everywhere. People are brewing with it like crazy. There's a lot of new combos with it coming out and you've seen it all over Pioneer and the Lotus Breach deck. Now it says each non-lad card in your graveyard has escape. The escape cost is it's CMC plus exiling three other cards. At the end step, you gotta sacrifice on a world breach, but that's irrelevant because when we play this, we're gonna win on the spot. So grinding station is one some of you guys might not have heard of. So you can tap it and sacrifice an artifact to mill target player for three. And whenever an artifact comes into play, you untap it. So this is the combo, but the thing you're gonna need to actually make this work is a zero drop artifact, which is very, very, very easy to get in your opener or just get it back from your graveyard with Emery. So Mishra's Bobble, he's running as incidental, just card advantage throughout the game. Engineered Explosives can be incidental removal and Mox Amber can be ramp. Now it doesn't matter what zero drop artifact you run that exists at all anything is going to work for this so you got to sack one of these things the grinding station and you're going to mill yourself for three cards and underworld breach conveniently says that the escape cost is it's cmc plus exiling three other cards the stars have aligned it is absolutely perfect so grinding station mills yourself for the three you need to escape the artifact itself and is going to trigger grinding station's second ability that says untap it so you know you can just start milling yourself out and you're gonna mill your entire deck with this two card combination and then you're gonna make a whole bunch of mana with mox amber if you have an emery in play and they're gonna end up casting a thassa's oracle which is gonna get you that win the game trigger it is simple as that super easy emery can also be card advantage he can get you back some card advantage pieces like arkham's astrolabe and um, mishra's bobble from the graveyard engineered explosives if you need some removal or you could just get back a grinding station if she milled over one when you played her or if one got killed or taken with thoughtsies so this is the main combo portion of the deck the rest of the deck is up to you if you're a brewer and you want to brew around with this the rest of the deck's up to you but like i said in the intro some people are running urza with this as a backup win con and just the card advantage piece however this list is just running spells to help you survive so here are said spells we got things like galvanic blast which can shock a creature deal four to it instead if you have three or more artifacts which should be easy metallic rebuke especially alongside those zero drop artifacts should be easy to improvise out and be basically a one mana counter spell cryptic command can keep you alive by tapping out your opponent's creatures to buy you another turn draw you a card if you're digging for stuff counter a spell bounce a permanent and bouncing that permanent is relevant for bouncing our own stuff because let's move on we got arkham's astrolabe so this is going to draw a card when it enters the battlefield. So if you pick this up with the Cryptic Command, if you're really trying to dig deep, you can just pick it up, play it again, draw more cards. And then Teferi Time Raveler can also bounce the Astrolabe, get that draw trigger off Teferi himself, replay the Astrolabe, draw another card. 
You can also use the fairy to bounce creatures if you're trying to stay alive. And also he protects your combo because the opponents can only cast spells at sorcery speed. So when you go to your turn and try to combo off, there's no way they can interact. And then we have Dance of the Mance as just a mass artifact reanimation spell if you're trying to get some card advantage. Can get you back things like Arkham's Astrolabe and Mishra's Bobble if you're trying to draw some cards. Or most importantly, it can get back Grinding Station if the opponent killed it, if they thought seized it, if Emery milled over it. So you gotta pay X and returns X target artifacts to CMC X or less so you can get back a lot of stuff. So that's pretty much it for the main board. Let's move on to our mana base, starting with our tech lands, Hall of Heliod's Generosity. You can pay a colorless and a white to put an artifact card from your graveyard back on top of your library. This is going to get the Underworld Breach, again, if it got killed, if it got taken by Thoughtseize, if Emery milled over it. Mystic Sanctuary uh, does the same thing as Hall of Heliod's Generosity, but except for instant and sorcery cards, those are going to go back on top as well. You can get back something like a Cryptic Command, a Gal Blast if you need to kill a creature, or you can get back Dance of the Mance if you need a card advantage bomb. And it is an island card, so you can fetch it out with your fetches. Speaking of our fetches, we have nine total of them, and they're all capable of grabbing an island that is most relevant because the deck is primary blue for things like Cryptic Command. So let's go on to our Shock Lands. We got two Steam Vents because Obviously, they tap for Underworld Breach, that's the most important colors. Hall and Fountain is there for Teferi and Breeding Pool. You might be wondering about this one, because we don't actually have any green cards in the main deck, but it is for something in the sideboard we'll get to in a moment. But let's move on to our basic lands first before going on to the sideboard. All snow covered, of course, because of Arkham's Astrolabe. Got a lot of islands, a whole place set of islands, because we are definitely primary blue for our counter spells and cryptic command. Then we got the off colors in Snow Covered Mountain and Snow Covered Plains. And finally, onto our sideboard, starting right off with our counter spells. Mystical Dispute is going to be absolutely needed for the blue versus blue matchups because there's going to be a lot of counter spells that we got to deal with. Things like Spell Pierce, Negate, Opposing Cryptic Commands, and Opposing Mystical Disputes, and anything of that nature. Aether Gust, I don't know what specifically this is for. Maybe for Jund or maybe for Amulet Titan. I'm not sure, but it can choose a target spell or permanent that's red or green and put it on top of Zona's library. So technically not a counter spell, but still serves that same same role and uh it's kind of just like time walks them like you know they play a goif you put it right back on top of your library it slows them down so much that's probably why there's three of these so if you're going up against an aggro deck it just really slows them down and then veil of summer is what our breeding pool was splashing so this is really good against thought seas and inquisition of kozlek and perhaps even a sideboard duress just destroys hand disruption because it replaces itself and makes you hexproof to black spells so therefore those things can't take your cards out of your hand and then it also serves the same purpose as mystical dispute to bring in in the blue matchups because your spells can't be countered by blue spells this turn and you draw a card so basically a one mana cryptic command very very relevant splash and also you can splash it right off of the arkham's astrolabe as well and then let's move on to our anti-aggro package. We got timely reinforcements just to gain six life and get some blockers against aggro if we really need just one or two more turns to survive to get off our combo. And then Galvanic Blast just as another removal piece to bring in against decks that are trying to combo using creatures, you know, like Druid Vizier or something like that. And then let's move on to our hate. So we got Tormod's Crypt as our graveyard hate, and it's also really cool that it just so happens to be a zero drop artifact, which is one of the pieces that we need for our Underworld Breach Grinding Station combo, so it can serve a dual purpose there. And then Wear and Tear is our artifact and enchantment hate. I don't know what artifacts we want to kill, but enchantments are very relevant because things like Rest in Peace and Leyline of the Void definitely shut us down because we need our graveyard to win. And then Blood Moon is super needed against Tron, but most importantly, Amulet Titan. That deck is getting way out of hand and it's everywhere and people are starting to play different variants of it. People started picking up the Uro variant and started building a black green rock variant. So you definitely need to shut them down with Blood Moon. So I know you might have seen a lot of decks like this in Modern lately. Just Emery spam, Urza spam, decks that are just a random cluster of artifacts and hate pieces and prison pieces. And sometimes they go on the lantern control plan. Sometimes they're trying to get out the Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meek combo. But I feel like this combo is a lot more easy to go for. It's a lot cheaper. It just consists of two cards that are both two mana, kind of like Thopter Foundry and Sword of the Meek, but they need Urza to go infinite, which is a four mana card. This only needs a zero drop artifact which you're definitely going to have in your opener and it costs you nothing so much cheaper and more efficient easier to find and with the pure existence of teferi time raveler these combos are a lot safer to go for than they ever were 
So for you spikes out there who are tired of playing Amulet Titan and want to pick up a new deck that is just going to destroy the meta, you definitely want to start brewing around with Underworld Breach plus Grinding Station. This is a deck that a lot of people are going to start talking about very soon. It is going to be a thing that a lot of us will grow to hate very soon in the next month or two. And the deck is still definitely in its early stages, so if you want to mess around with it and make it better, the sky's the limit. Go for it. Have your fun. And that's gonna wrap it up for today's deck tech. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button down below and leave a comment, let me know what you think about the deck. Once again, congratulations to a Shabinator with their finish with the deck. And I'm gonna get on out of here. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.